Good evening and welcome to Chasing the Facts. I'm your host, Sam Chase, and with us this evening is Mr. Lawrence McDonald, who is a member of the Neshoba Valley Regional Technical High School. Did I say that correctly? You did. Now, I, usually, I usually slaughter a person's title or their function, but I'm glad to know that I got that right. I'm on the district school committee. That's even better. I like that. And the reason I say the district school committee mm -hmm. is, as you well know, uh, the Neshoba Tech District is made up of eight towns, including Chelmsford. Yes, and uh, this is a regional school district, as, as, as you have correctly described it. Now, I'm um, trying to remember, I think... Uh, we got the eighth town rather recently. Uh, air. That was air. Okay, so that's quite a uh, uh, geographically. That's quite a stretch. So, I would say probably Chelmsford is all the way from East Chelmsford to West Townsend is a lot, that, of, lot of land. That is a lot of land, and that, that's that's at least a thirty-five minute drive, if not more, on on a traffic day. I would say. Mm -hmm. So, eight towns. Now, is that typical of a of a uh, regional uh, district such as yours? or Well, it is. Uh, for example, Greater Lowell is four, but okay. it has Lowell, which is a large city. Much larger population. Right? right, and so, but it has Dunstable, which is much smaller. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have Assabet Valley and Shawsheen Tech, and there's a number of these regional districts. And Monty Tech, actually, I believe, has 18 towns. Right, but those are relatively small. Well. It, Monty Tech, I think, includes Fitchburg. It does, which but is, the rest of them are yeah, uh, fairly small towns. Westminster and Ashburnham and places like that, which are, right. which are very small towns, right? Right, and a regional school district has you know, unique considerations. For example, uh, a regional school district can't charge even a dime for transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, the state does reimburse a certain percentage of the transportation, and I'm happy to say this year in the governor's budget, it looks like it's going to be a higher percentage of the regional transportation is going to get reimbursed. But running a regional school district is not the same as running a, a single town's high school, for example. Right. So now <clears throat> you've said that we have eight towns in the regional uh, district. Uh, so how many, uh, how does that translate into members of the school committee? How many folks are on the school committee? Great question. So our district agreement uh, mandates that the number of representatives a town gets is by the percentage of students that attend the school over a 10-year uh, period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Westford, their number went down slightly to just below 10%. And so they previously had two members and an alternate, which is another unique thing about our committee, and they had to go down to one member and really? an alternate. So they actually lost membership. Mm -hmm. They did lose a member, and um, which in a way for our committee, for the working group, it was unfortunate. Now, uh, Chelmsford has... Three members three and an members alternate and because... An alternate, right. Right, because we have 29.8% of the school's population. So roughly 30%. So there's you, uh, Claire Janot, and who are the other? Sam Poulton. Uh, Sam Poulton, and then Pat Wojcic. Pat Wojcic is our alternate. Is the alternate, which I found, I thought that was very interesting uh, because as most people who watch the show probably know, Pat is also on the select board. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to think of uh, if there was another time within my memory where a member of the select board had actually... Um, been on a, a school committee, a regional school committee, uh, she wouldn't uh, be able to do it in Chelmsford because of our bylaw that says you can only serve on one elected committee. But apparently she can do it uh, on a regional basis. Because it's a appointed position. Because it is an appointed position by the school committee and the select board, is that correct? It is. Yes, okay. And. Well, the thing, the thing you need to know about Pat is Pat was the liaison, probably still is, mm -hmm. from the select board to the Neshoba Tech District School Committee, and Pat was at every meeting anyway. So uh, it just made sense for her to be the alternate in that sense. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. she, you know, she's a hard worker. She was, at every, mm -hmm. she was at every one of our meetings regardless, so it did make sense. Yeah, she might have had better attendance than some of the regular members. 
We're also, spe <laughs> we're also special municipal employees, which um, means that some of these conflicts uh, don't apply. Right, uh, for those who are watching, um, the special municipal employee status, as Lawrence has correctly said, means that some of the limited provisions in the open meeting law and ethics uh, provisions of the state law uh, do not apply uh, as, as harshly as they would if you were not a spe special municipal employee. But, but by the way, we're not employees, right. it's just the, it's, a, it's in the title. Legally, you're employees, but you don't get paid. We do not get paid, no, so, right. no compensation. Anyone, anyone who serves on a municipal board under state law is considered a municipal, legally is considered a municipal employee, whether or not they're compensated. That's just the way state law mm -hmm. is. So, yeah, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a very important distinction. Well, Lawrence, we had you on the show, and I know, uh, we have you on the show, and I know that you want to talk uh, specifically about the certain uh, differences between a technical high school education versus a traditional high school and also describe some of the uh, programs uh, that you folks have put into place over the last several years and just as an observer um, and somebody who is getting up in years so I remember how things were 50 and 60 years ago um, <clears throat> when I was in high school there were no technical high schools in Massachusetts the vocational arts were included in the regular traditional uh, town or city high school. So for example, in my high school, we had a machine shop, we had graphic arts, we had auto mechanics, we had home economics, we had uh, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, but that has gone by the wayside, I think, in the, I think it was around the late 1960s, early 1970s, where they started to break some of these things away and establish the regional technical districts. So I'll stop talking. I will turn the show over to you, and I'll let you go with the uh, things that you would like to talk about. Well, the technical, thank you. There are 20 technical programs at Neshoba Tech, mm -hmm. and which technical programs are offered, uh, that's data-driven. The data from the U.S. Department of Labor, the data from the Massachusetts uh, Workforce Development Agency, I believe it's called, and other data, because a technical high school is trying to provide workers for the jobs we're going to need. So it's re it's market next. responsive. It is. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is because if you think about it, these skills drive a certain drive certain aspects of the economy. I'm going to guess that you don't offer a course in blacksmithing. No, <laughs> not so much. And, um, and every so often, the unfortunate decision is taken to sunset a program mm -hmm. in favor of something that the labor data shows we're going to need more. And so people who haven't been inside or know anybody who's been inside a vocational technical high school in a long time or who remember when it was the machine shop and the carpentry shop mm -hmm. and the auto shop um, and the home ec shop uh, back in the high school may not realize that, of course, we have the carpentry, the electrical, the plumbing. Uh, those drive the construction trades and you know, other aspects of the economy. But on the other end of the house, we have, um, we have robotics, engineering, uh, programming and web development, um, and Neshoba Tech has applied for a number of competitive uh, workforce skills grants. And one of the grants that we uh, got recently was for $3.75 million, which is going to allow about a 6,000 square foot uh, addition to the school, which will bring engineering and robotics and programming and web development together in the same space adjacent to advanced manufacturing. So the lathe and the bridge port that I ran when I was that age, uh, they still have a couple of them, but they have these enormous machines that you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you tell it what to make and it makes it. And 
you know, these are the jobs that are being asked for. They're in demand. Uh, advanced that, manufacturing, in particular. That's good to hear because what we hear, what we hear from the media is we don't have manufacturing anymore in this country, which is uh, it's it's absolutely not true. Okay, and so it's it's good to hear that uh, you know we're preparing for the newer uh, iterations of manufacturing. It doesn't look like it looked when. Of course not. Right. Right. So yeah. so I worked my way through college as a sheet metal mechanic. Uh, that was the Chapter 74 program that I went through. Mm -hmm. and I worked my way through college as a sheet metal mechanic and I would often run a spot welder. And uh, in my job, oh, I don't know, about six, seven years ago, I uh, visited a metal, manuf a metal fab place. And when we came upon the spot welders, there was one man minding three spot welding robots. Each of these spot welding robots had to be being kind to myself, at least four times faster than I was. Mm -hmm. And so that one man was turning out at least 12 times the amount of work I was when I did that job. So manufacturing doesn't necessarily look like it looked. No, it doesn't. And, you know, 10 years from now, we'll be sitting at this table talking about how it doesn't look like it looked in 2023. And so Neshoba right. Tech and the other technical schools have to respond to that. Another way in which Neshoba Tech is responding in, a, um, in combination with um, Mass Hire, the, the unemployment office, is there are programs, uh, uh, Career Training Institute, CTI programs being offered at night uh, for people who are unemployed or underemployed, mm -hmm. adults can apply for this. And if they qualify, it's no cost and they, the programs are uh, Tier one electrical, tier one plumbing, automotive, and advanced manufacturing. And so that has also been a successful program that is helping people get better jobs. Mm. And that's an interesting program because in order to run one of those programs, you have to have uh, employers all queued up and willing to at least interview the people in the classes. And so it's very often that the people who are in those night school classes have jobs lined up before the, mm -hmm. before the cohort even ends. So that is another program we're pretty pleased about. Now, uh, what about um, the equivalent, or if there, if there is an equivalent to community ed that you would find here in Chelmsford? So let's say, let's say uh, at my age I decide I would like to learn how to do some basic welding. Uh, is there any outreach to the community that says, well, you can come in at night and do that? Do you have those kinds of offerings for the community? Not, not at the moment. We have talked about, um, we have talked about being able to reintroduce it in the future. Mm -hmm. But right now it's the money to do it is probably more appropriately spent where it's being spent. Right. And by the way, I think Chelmsford Community Ed is a great program. Oh, it is. It's terrific. Yeah. I go uh, every Thursday night for American Sign Language. I think it's a great program. How long have you been doing that? I have finished three semesters, and in the fall, I will take another one. Wow. Yeah, it's just. And how would you, after, uh, after that amount, I know we're a little bit off topic, but th this interests me very much because uh, you see it everywhere. In fact, uh, my granddaughter had her first communion on Sunday and they had a, a signer in the, mm -hmm. in the front of the church, um, which of course I think was probably difficult to see if he was standing up, but if people were sitting down, of course you could see it. And I thought, and I don't know anything about it, but it looked to me like she was, she was keeping up, okay? And mm -hmm. uh, it seems to me that that's an incredibly difficult thing to do. So oh, well, please, please uh, enlighten me on, on whether that's true or not. Well, um, it, it's easier to learn than some languages because it is, in a way, a version of English. Mm -hmm. But my hat is off to Chelmsford Community Ed for offering such programs. Yeah. Oh, I think it's, yeah, absolutely. And the high school is quite busy in the evening with programs. Mm -hmm. Sorry to take you down. No, that's detour. okay. That's okay. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear that. So... Uh, I've got, uh, you know, it's funny, you talk about the uh, programs that are being offered and 
the fact that the school tries to be um, market responsive, which makes perfect sense to me, which is again why you don't have a blacksmithing course. Not, not that I have anything against blacksmiths, but it's not something that is uh, in, in great demand at this point. But, but yeah. a program we don't offer, a, a Chelmsford resident could apply to uh, one of the sister schools that does. That's a good point. And we've had that mm -hmm. at Neshoba Tech where a student from Billerica, where Shawsheen Tech sits, mm -hmm. wound up going to Neshoba Tech because Shawsheen did not have the program that student wanted, Neshoba Tech did. And so, for example, um, welding. We don't offer welding, but our sister, some of our sister schools do. Okay. So a Chelmsford student who wanted to learn welding uh, would apply to the Neshoba Tech, but then also apply to the other school. Now, would, would that person attend both schools or just, nope. just the one? So, he, so that person would, would be permanently based in Bill Ricca, for example? Yes, they okay. would. Okay, all right, all right, all right. That's and so you try to make the opportunities available as right. appropriate, but you can't be all things to all people at right. all times. One thing that I uh, think that a lot of folks don't understand, and of course, having sat through town meeting for many, many years, you, you learn uh, that <clears throat> it's considered that the regional vocational technical high school is, in fact, one of your schools. So if I'm a Chelmsford resident, we have the Chelmsford schools that are located in Chelmsford, the traditional schools, mm -hmm. the traditional high school, but Neshoba Tech is also a Chelmsford High School. It's also a Townsend High School and a Westford High School, too. Mm -hmm. But the thought that if I send my child to Neshoba Tech, somehow uh, that my child is now not part of the Chelmsford School fabric is, is, is not true. I mean, the administration is totally different. I get that. It's a different location but you're still graduating, in, in a sense, from a Chelmsford school. Is that an accurate yes. uh, way of expressing it? Yeah, and some people have raised that concern over mm -hmm. the years, but you know, there are many different ways in which people learn, and a skill-based high school is a very hands-on mm -hmm. experience. You're moving, uh, you know, even the work you're doing in your math uh, or English might dovetail with the work you're doing in your technical area. And um, the school has developed what they call the portrait of a graduate, where they've put a lot of thought into what are the characteristics of a successful graduate that a, is going to be successful in life that employers are going to want to hire. And there's this framework of success that is um, woven through everything that the school does and the students strive for that and uh, it builds self-esteem and the students really are workforce ready when they get out whether they're going to go to college first or not you know they have the skills to succeed and you know some of them will go to college uh, Typically, what percentage of your graduates would go to a traditional four-year college? I don't know off the top of my head, but for example, the engineering students uh, almost all go to college. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and um, they go to UMass Lowell. A lot of them go to WPI. Um, mm -hmm. I know a young man who was in veterinary science who is now at Tufts, uh, is going to be a veterinarian. So. In some ways, in many ways, the programs that they participated in in high school, these Chapter 74 programs, were the on-ramp mm -hmm. for what they want to do later in life. I mean, I was a uh, technical uh, high school student, and I spent my whole career in a variety of technical uh, positions mm. uh, during college and after college. So it, it lays that solid foundation. And a percentage of the students, a uh, small percentage, go in the military, and um, the largest percentage, you know, they go into their trade. But all of these trades are much more technical than they used to be. Oh, absolutely. I mean, carpentry is no longer arm and hammer. You know, the, the laser levels, the, uh, the computer programs for estimating material, you know, all of this 
is evolving, will evolve, and so these students are emerging with, with good skills. The school has, I don't know if we've ever talked about this before, but there's an advisory board for each of the technical areas. And so last week... Um, Made up of, of teachers? Of, of people from the local business community and okay. industry All right. who advise each technical area about... So let me back up if I may. Each program is what's called a Chapter 74 program. So there's, a, there's an educational framework laid out for every technical program. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has approved it. It, you know, federal, state laws, it matches all of that. And so the teacher can't teach just anything they want. They have to teach the framework over the course of uh, the three and a half years that they will have the student in that shop. But in addition to that, um, say it's automotive, which I know is near and dear to your heart. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, the, the Honda dealer down the street, um, Bach. Bach, thank you. They have uh, people who are on the advisory board and a variety of the uh, businesses in the automotive industry will have members on the advisory board. So each, each shop will have, I don't know, four, six members of an advisory board and they will help illuminate what is important in their industry. It could be as simple as this new tool has come out and I don't have a lot of people who know how to use it. Do you have one of these gizmos? Mm -hmm. If you don't have one of those gizmos, can you get one of those gizmos? And if you get one of those gizmos, can you teach your students how to use it? Because we need people who know how that thing works. And, you know, getting back to automotive collision, some of the trucks are made of aluminum now. Mm -hmm. Getting back to automotive, some of the cars um, are hybrids. Uh, somebody donated a hybrid for the students uh, to be able to work on. And so we're trying to give them the exposure to what's next. You know, that, uh, that sounds so basic and elemental, but I can tell you, uh, of course I didn't go to a uh, vocational school, um, <clears throat> but when I got my first real job, and it was in finance, and I found out that all of the theory and everything that I learned in college about accounting and so on and so forth, you, you have to know that stuff. But what I learned when I had got to my first real job was that every company does it differently. And listening to what you just said, uh, going in the back of my mind thinking how valuable it would have been to have somebody from <clears throat> the corporate world, the corporate finance world, sitting in some of those classes saying, wait a minute, you know, that's textbook. This is real world. This is how we really look at it. Okay, because uh, there can be quite a uh, uh, there can be quite a disconnect there, as you know. So I, I, that's very that's fascinating to hear that you have those advisory boards that are able to, for lack of a better way of saying it, keep the curriculum focused and, and honest, if you will, and relevant to what's actually going on in that particular. Uh, industry. I think that's... And they meet several times a year. That is a good thing. There was over 200 of them at the school the uh, wow. uh, week or so ago. Yeah. They have a general meeting and a nice dinner and then they break into the groups in their shop and they meet mm -hmm. and talk things over and, and look things over. You know, does this shop have the equipment that is relevant? Mm -hmm. You know, some of the bridge ports are gone because they're not as relevant as those big advanced manufacturing machines. Right. Well, again, everything, as you said, uh, seems to be technology driven, and we know how quickly things change in that environment. I know I worked at uh, Wang Labs for many, many years, and this is going back even in the early 80s. And one of the first things I was told when I got into that company was, we reinvent ourselves every 18 months, because if we don't do it, somebody else will, and we'll be out of business. And that's how fast things were moving back then. They move a lot faster now, and everything is technology-driven. So uh, that brings up another point. The cost of running uh, an operation now... Uh, well, the, frame, the frameworks actually dictate... I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. The, the frameworks actually dictate, for example, the um, student-teacher ratio in particular shops. For mm -hmm. example, 
uh, we've recently added an additional carpentry teacher because demand for carpentry is high, as you would expect. Carpentry can be dangerous if you're doing it wrong, mm -hmm. and you are limited to the number of students per teacher that you can have in carpentry. That makes perfect sense. Right, and I think everybody who sends their child to school wants them to come home safe and sound. That makes sense. Absolutely. But in general, in general, the cost of a technical education is higher because, uh, well, obviously, you have capital costs that the uh, traditional schools don't have. You have to buy all this equipment that, you know, if you're fitting out an automotive shop or, or a carpentry shop or something like that, uh, it requires, a, a, or I would imagine... A new lift. A new lift in automotive, uh, you're, you're talking, tens of thousands talking, of dollars. Yes, exactly. Uh, your uh, culinary program, that stuff isn't cheap. Okay. The culinary program's award-winning. Uh, I know, and I have yet to go and have a meal. My wife and I talk about it all the time, and we just haven't. Shall we do it? Yes. Well, let's finish the show first, but we'll. Okay. Let's let's. We'll make a date. We'll you and a... Elaine and Candy and I will will go and we'll we'll have the dinner. I I, I would like that. Thank you. You know, I've had a few of your breakfasts. Yes. Uh, as a member of the finance committee going and mm -hmm. listening to the budget, but... Uh, well, the, yeah. the commencement speaker several years ago was an Neshoba Tech graduate who, among other things, had been Tom Brady's personal chef and had co-written a book with him. Well, there you go. Wow. So a man like Tom Brady who can hire anybody in the world he wants, right. I would imagine. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> he's not clipping a lot of coupons. No, I don't think so. Right? No. <laughs> and so... You know, I like to talk about these programs as what I call vector changes mm -hmm. in people's lives. Very often, an eighth grader will go on a tour. They'll get the Neshoba Tech will come over to the Parker or the McCarthy. It's a guidance counselor and some students, and they'll talk about what Neshoba Tech is and give a presentation. And students who are interested will go on a tour. And, and, our, a, and our system here supports that. It does. Because there was a time when they didn't. That's true. Yes, okay. I'm, gl I'm glad to hear that. And mm -hmm. I think people need to be allowed to have choices. Yes. And, but very often they'll go and sometimes they'll know what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Dad's a plumber, I'm going to be a plumber. Okay. Or they just know what they want to do. But most of the time they don't. And each student as a freshman comes in and spends one day in each of the 20 programs. Wow. And then they spend one week in, I believe, six of the 20 programs before they make their final selection. They make it and the school, you know, puts people where they should be, but tries very, very hard to give people their first choice. Mm -hmm. So everyone gets their first choice or their second choice, but they've, they've had some exposure to it. Mm -hmm. And do, do any of the students, I mean, who, who, they may initially go in thinking one thing, uh, what percentage has their mind changed as a result of that? Oh, uh, so the valedictorian um, a couple of years ago said that she only chose engineering because her brother was an upperclassman in that shop and she wanted to spend a week in the shop kind of annoying her older brother. <laughs> but... She fell in love with engineering and wound up as the valedictorian and is now a student at an engineering college. Oh, there you go. Because the exposure was the important thing and she got excited about it. And I think people work better when they're doing something they're excited about. Well, of course, you know, they say, what's the old saying? Uh, you do something, you, if you work, uh, you, it's something that you love to do and you never work a day in your life. Right. Okay, and I think that's absolutely true. Lawrence, we've got about 35 seconds. Any parting thing that you would like to leave with us? Um, the Shoba Tech is Chumpsford's skill-focused high school, and I think it's a great resource educationally, and I think it's a great resource economically, and I appreciate all of the support from the town, and people should at least go and have lunch. Which we've already said we will do. Okay.